नमस्ते वेलकम टू अर्थ नीति वेर वी डिस्कस मनी एंड मनी मैटर्स टू हेल्प यू इन योर इन्वेस्टिंग डिसीजन टूडे द स्टॉक दैट वी आर गोइंग टू एनालाइज इज इन द सी आर डी एम ओ सेक्टर द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट रिसर्च डेवलपमेंट एंड मैन्युफैक्चरिंग ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सेक्टर नाउ दिस सेक्टर इज एट द कस्प ऑफ अ ट्रांसफॉर्मेटिव जर्नी विच इज पॉइज टू रिवोल्यूशनाइज द फार्मास्यूटिकल इंडस्ट्री इन इंडिया from its current levels of nearly 3 to 3.5 billion dollars this sector is set for a staggering growth to nearly 22 to 25 billion dollars by 2035 this growth is driven by its strong foundation in small manic- molecule manufacturing and emerging expertise in biologics This rapid expansion is fueled by global supply chain realignments, cost advantages and the increasing demand for advanced therapies like antibody drug conjugates and RNA therapeutics. The sector's growth is further amplified by India's strategic position as a preferred destination for outsourcing by western pharmaceutical companies seeking to de-risk their supply chains. as the global crdmo market is expected to reach 329 billion dollars by 2029 companies like singene international limited are at the forefront of this transformation today our focus is going to be on singene where we fundamentally analyze this stock so let's begin Singene is a key player in the CRDMO sector in India. Now before we start with the analysis please understand that this video is for educational purposes and not a stock recommendation video. Singene was formed in 1993 as a private limited company and later converted into a public limited company in 2007. It is headquartered in Bengaluru and is a subsidiary of Biocon, one of India's largest biotechnology companies. Singene offers a wide array of services ranging from early discovery to commercial supply catering to pharmaceuticals biotechnology animal health nutrition cosmetics and specialty chemical companies their services include discovery development manufacturing and dedicated r&d centers Looking at the financial performance of Singene over the past few years the company has shown significant growth in revenue and earnings in the fiscal year ended March 2024 Singene reported revenue of 3489 crores which has compounded annually at a healthy CAGR of 14% for the last 3 years the company's operating profit margin is around 29% again Uh, a healthy sign and it has maintained a debt to equity ratio of 0.14 which is relatively low so company is practically low on debt which indicates a strong financial position of the company the return on equity has also been relatively low not a good uh, factor but the roe has been maintained for the past 3 years at around 13.2% checking the uh, shareholding pattern of the company the promoters have reduced the stake in the company by re- uh, roughly 1.98% from september 2024 quarter in the december quarter the promoter shareholding stood at 54 52.74 fii holdings have been constant at 20.65 bii's have increased their holding in the december quarter in september uh, it stood at 17.49 and for the december quarter the dii holding stood at 19.52 what do analysts recommend about singene well jeffries has maintained a hold rating on the stock by adjusting the target price to 860 from 890 they expect singene to grow at a cagr the profits to grow at a cagr uh, of nearly 23% uh, for financial year uh, 23 to 25 which would be driven by revenue growth and margin expansions overall 42% upside in the price of the stock is expected by analyst with a target of 1030 but ubs has maintained a sell rating on singene with a target price of 650 citing challenges in meeting financial year 2025 guidance and margin pressures 
Currently, the stock is trading around 725 levels. Sinjin's revenue is primarily generated from the United States, followed by Europe and other regions. In the fiscal year ended March 2024, the US uh, revenue contributed to nearly 23.32 billion rupees, while Europe contributed 8.78 billion rupees. Now, this geographical diversification helps Sinjin mitigate risks associated with any single market and positions it well for global growth. Recently, Sinjin acquired its first biologics manufacturing facility in the US for $36.5 million. Now, this acquisition is expected to enhance its biologics capacity, increasing its single-use bioreactor capacity to 50,000 liters. This strategic move not only expands Sinjin's presence in the US, but also strengthens its position in the biologics market, offering services to cell line development and process optimization. The pharmaceutical industry is facing challenges such as regulatory changes and potential tariffs. Although there are no new tariffs announced by the US on pharmaceuticals, any future changes could impact Sinjin's operations. However, Sinjin's diversified client base and its expansion into new markets like the US biologic sector helps mitigate these risks. Sinjin is currently trading at a PE ratio of 61.1, which is relatively high compared to its peers. Its price to book value is at 6.64, which indicates premium valuation. But Sinjin is expected to maintain a strong growth trajectory where its return on equity is set to uh, increase at 14.3 over the next three years. Analysts have a positive outlook on the company with good coverage and forecast indicating earnings growth above the market average. Driven by its strategic expansion and growing demand for contract research services with company's ability to innovate and expand its services positions it well for future growth. In conclusion, Sinjin is a strong player in the CRDMO space with robust financial performance, strategic expansion and diversified revenue base. While the industry faces challenges and mixed analyst views, its growth prospects and strategic moves make it an in, uh, interesting stock to watch for. What would you do about Sinjin? Would you invest in this stock or is there another stock in the CRDMO sector on your radar? Let me know in the comment section. I would like to hear your views on this video. Until next time, stay safe and goodbye. Happy investing.